Aloha, it's Kim Jolene with Finding Your Fiji, and I am super excited because I am interviewing Beth Giles today, and Beth um, is a NIA instructor. She is going to be the NIA instructor for us on the Vitally You Maui Retreat, so I'm super excited to chat with her. I want to just share a little bit about Beth before we get started. She discovered NIA in 2004. And it has transformed her body and her life. And I can't wait to hear how that happens. She is a Nia Black Belt instructor whose passion is to share her love of movement and dance with people of all ages, shapes, and sizes. So Nia is for everyone, which I love. She teaches eight classes a week, plus offers workshops, dance parties, and one-on-one -on -one movement sessions in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, which is how I know Beth because we met in Minnesota. Uh, Beth thrives on the fun and freedom of dancing Nia and empowers her students to move in their body's way. For her, dancing Mia is energy medicine, I love that, for a healthy, joyful, and loving life. So we were just um, getting a little bit grounded and connected before we started the, the video here and talking about joy. And that is something that just, um, I feel like Beth, you just exude joy. Like that's just like, um, but I imagine maybe that wasn't always the case. Like how did you get into Nia? How did that help you shift your life? Well, um, I think I always have had, oh, go ahead. Oh, you actually, why not just, um, will you just share with us first, what is Nia for the people yes. that don't know? Yes, beautiful. So Nia is a, it's a fusion fitness practice. So it started as fitness, but then it became so much more. It's a lifestyle practice, a holistic workout, and a way of being in the world. So it starts by coming to class and moving your body in the way that your body moves best. Um, but then it, it really has so much more deepness to it in terms of how do you live? What choices do you make? How do you interact? How, do, how are your relationships working? Um, what is your energy like? What transmitting of energy do you do in your daily life? So it's, it seems very much like a fitness class, like Zumba or something like that, but it's, it's much deeper and it really has a personal practice element to it that nice. when people do it on a daily basis, even just a little bit, it really is transformative. Nice. And so tell me what, um, cause there, it combines a couple different things, right? The yes. actual work of it. So, right. So there's, there's basically dance arts, martial arts and healing okay. arts. Oh, so, nice. and I had a new student in my class today who she was like, Oh my gosh, I love kickboxing and I love yoga. And I felt like the two just came together in this amazing way today. Nice. And so oh. she really hit the nail on the head that it's, it's, it's this beautiful combination of rhythmic, harder movements and then soft, flowing, internal movements that kind of nourish and, and let the body really feel gentle too. So it's, it's this beautiful harmony of the two. And dance brings in the sort of the fun and the sparkle and the silly and the playful. And yeah. then the Taekwondo, Tai Chi, Aikido brings in the grounding and the um, and really sort of personal power, building your own personal power. Nice. And, then we, and then we add in the healing elements of yoga, Alexander Technique, and Feldenkrais. And Feldenkrais is, is a really a somatic way of noticing your body, paying attention to sensation, oh. and connecting the mind, the, that neuroplasticity, when we can notice how our body is moving and create new pathways, create new new movement patterns that help us feel better, help us have less pain. And so, so I think, I think most awesome. people know what yoga is also, but what's the Alexander Technique? The Alexander Technique is a movement technique um, developed by a gentleman that, uh, I just heard about it actually, that he um, was a speaker and he realized that as he was speaking, his, his head would sort of move forward and his voice would go away and he realized that his posture had everything to do with his ability to be a good speaker. And so he developed this technique of, we, for Nia, we think of it as movement from the top. So you're moving as if you have a sort of a beautiful golden cord lifting your spine, lifting the back of your head up. And it really changes, 
it changes everything and it allows your head to have this little bit of more movement and everything right. feels Ooh. loose and juicy and good. Ooh, I so love that. that's, I mean, we, we talk about Nia as being like chocolate. You have to taste it because yeah. all chocolates have different tastes and yeah. so, so Nia is its own beautiful thing. It's, it used to stand for back in 1983 when it was created uh, non-impact aerobics. Oh, and now, interesting. And now it's, and then it was neuromuscular integrated activity, <laughs> mind body activity. And now it's just this beautiful name. Um, I like to think of it as the acronym now I am. Ooh. So there, there's, Ooh, like there's that. that piece. Like this is about loving the self, loving your life, finding that, that joy with a capital J. Yeah. Um, that, that, guides you uh, and helps you to live your best life. Oh my gosh. So juicy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So how did you get into this? Like how, how did this come into your life and what has it, that done for you? It really was a beautiful thing. Like, you know, how I was looking for exercise. Basically I was a young, younger mom, had two small children and a friend of mine took me to a class in Chicago. And I had never heard of it. I'd never done it. And I was just blown away. Like, okay, this is the best class I've ever taken in terms of a group fitness class. I yeah. loved every minute of it. And I love to dance. I already had that passion from being a child, taking tap and ballet and then dancing in high school and doing a little bit of dancing in college, but never really feeling like I could be a dancer. But had that joy, that movement piece that I loved. And so then Nia brought that to me. And, um, and I just, I went twice a week. I found a class here in St. Paul. I went twice a week. It was just like my, it was, it was my haven. It was my joy. It was my place where I felt like my body was getting some fitness because, you know, I need, yeah. need some, some working out, right. You know, build yeah. my muscles. And, um, one thing that, and I've noticed this with some students that come too, it's, it's very powerful in terms of that it hits your body and your mind and your spirit and your emotions. Like there's, that's, that's really specifically about the practice that we're going to conduct our whole self in it, not just our big muscle groups. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to just only be in happy mode per se, but you know, there's all kinds of things that might come up. And so at the end of class, when I was first starting to take it, I would lay on the floor, we'd get down on the floor at the end of class and I would start crying. And I was so surprised. I was like, okay, this class is so about joy. Like, why am I crying? But I realized I was moving things through me finally, you know, like yeah. things that I didn't need to hold on to anymore. They were coming out and releasing oh and gosh. little by little. Um, then I, then I took my white belt. So the white belt, me has a belt system in order to sort of advance yourself in the program. Um, so I think you mentioned in my bio that I'm a black belt. So I just took that level of training last June. Um, and I took my white belt in 2012. Okay. So that, um, that opened up this whole new world for me of wanting to be a teacher yeah. and thinking that that was really my, that was my calling. Like I wanted to share this with other people. I, you know, I love it for myself, but I really felt drawn to being able to help others find it and wow. do That's it. Super cool. Super cool. Oh, so yeah. I, um, you know, interestingly, we're going to be, as you know, we're going to be working with uh, five different elements, uh, the mm -hmm. feng shui elements while we're there. And this is, I, I feel like this is such a unique opportunity because for me in my work, I often think it's hard to dive into um, the depth that the element energy has to offer in just a regular consultation. But in a week, like we can get into a lot of stuff. So um, the couple days that you are doing, um, Mia, and I, I love that we've got this created so we get to do it at sunset one day. Mm -hmm. um, which I'm really excited about because like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, dancing at sunset, like the energy yes. of that mm -hmm. is just like, I'm super excited about that. Um, so that particular day, I'm just kind of looking at my little schedule here. That particular day is a wood day. 
um, that we're <laughs> going to be dancing at sunset. Um, and that's actually going to be the Wednesday of, um, of the week that we're going to mm -hmm. be dancing at sunset. And that wood energy um, is really, um, you know, of course it's very grounding, but it is about growth also. So mm -hmm. I love this essence of, um, and then the other day that we're doing Mia is the water day and the water day is a day we're going to be working on emotions and how do we work mm -hmm. with emotions and, and how do we release them? And so I'm really excited to hear a, a little bit about your perspective on like, um, that, how that just naturally works with Mia, like to release things mm -hmm. from your body. Well, for me, I think it really has to do with the fact that we move the entire body and really in terms of like the chakras too. Okay, so, yeah. so that's the music hits us at those points specifically. So we're, I'm choosing music that is evocative for, for your root chakra, for your sacral chakra, for the whole, all the way on up. Mm -hmm. and, and so moving the body at those points, both slow and fast and hard and soft, I believe that's, what helps us to move things in and out, move things up or down. However, you know, we really always start with grounding. We start with the base. We want to be solid and yes. stable in our base. Um, and then as we move through class, really taking it higher and higher. And um, to that, you know, for me, it's, it's a spiritual practice as well as a physical practice so that yeah. You know, if people are open to that, they call in whatever, whatever guidance, whatever they need during that time to um, feel safe, to feel whole, to feel loved. Um, it's this practice is about loving your body as it is. There's no, you know, special um, size or shape or abilities that need to happen uh, in terms of how you move. Um, one of my favorite things that I, I just feel like it's just at the core of me is that if you have a beating heart, you can dance. So our, our beating, our beating heart is actually a dance in and of itself. So, so, yes. so it's, 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 it's intertwined with really like a deep reverence for your own body. And I have to say, before I found Mia, I, my body was sort of a, I don't know, I never really thought about it, except that maybe I thought about it in negative ways. I didn't like this. I didn't like that. Right. I wanted less weight. I wanted to be, you know, whatever, change it. Yeah. Um, and so that was one of the transformative things that happened was that I began to just be in awe of my body and the ways mm. that it can move and be just ever grateful for that. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure that I really answered your question entirely, but yeah, you did. I, you know, it's, 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 um, there's just, there's so much of the moving, I think through the joints, through the fascia, through the, 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 the whole nervous system, the super highway of our, of our spinal column that allows things to be released. Yeah, we can even set that as an intention. You know, that's I mean, that's a very yes. important part of a class is that we have yes. a focus and an intention, and and each person will really take on their own, right? You know, I can I can guide, and that's really what I am as a guide. Um, but each person brings their own personal their own personal intention to yes, the, yeah. The and, and I think so. it's you know the interesting thing too is that we do carry emotions in our body. Um, mm -hmm. So this is, you know, something we talk about when, um, you know, if anybody's familiar with EFT, the emotional freedom mm -hmm. technique talks about yeah. how we do carry emotions in our body. And um, I think the movement of things does help things to be released, especially things that we are, you know, ready to let go of. Um, mm -hmm. But I also think the movement like helps us um, unhitch Things that are uh, maybe have been connected to us for a long time that don't serve us anymore, 
right? right. And that can be, you know, body image is one of those things, right? Mm -hmm. um, that so many people throughout our lives, we've, you know, we've been told this or we've been told that or somebody said something and it really like stuck mm -hmm. with us, whether it was true or not. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we have come to believe different things. So I think that's the other beautiful piece about this work too, is to be able um, to, you know, allow ourselves to, to be who we are in the moment and that authenticity. So this is something we chatted about a little bit before we got on the um, recording is about that really a, a huge theme of this retreat is authenticity because in the new, um, in this new dimension that we're in, and I'm getting some chills now as I'm sharing this, but in this new dimension, this fifth dimension that we're in, um, it doesn't work to be inauthentic. Like things are falling, anything that's not authentic mm -hmm. in your life is falling away. Um, it's going it to sometimes mm -hmm. in some cases crumble and not be very, um, not be kind of a bumpy road as it releases. Um, mm -hmm. Or we can actively help to release things that are no longer serving us to become more authentic. So I'd love mm -hmm. to hear your take on um, just in general, like your, your thoughts and ideas around authenticity. Mm hmm well, Mia definitely has helped me with that practice, with noticing mostly through my, like noticing the body and sensation. Yeah. So, so I, you know, like maybe you have that sort of, or you know, you feel that sort of anxiety or mm -hmm. tension or, and, and to me, that's, that's something telling me either I'm like you mentioned, like have a, I have a little connection to an old thought or belief or pattern that I haven't quite untangled and let go of, or that a situation is, you know, that I need to really pay attention to how I'm reacting or what's happening in the situation. Um, we talk about in the, uh, um, how to be in communication with each other and really transmitting and receiving information in a way that is both honors each other and honors who you are from, you know, coming from your own truth, your own self. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, there was a lot of times in my life where I was just trying to please the other people in my life and just doing, you know, whatever was going to make everybody else happy. It didn't matter if it really made me feel good. But so, you know, again, it's like that, that sense of like, okay, well, it's important for me to love myself first and for me to feel and learn what's authentically me and then bring that into any kind of relationship, including the relationship of me teaching or, or being in a class. Um, so every time I, in fact, I've, I've really, I've, people say to me, oh, you know, you're just always smiling in class. Like you're just like exude, like you said, exuding joy. And I, and I was like, that is, I mean, that is who I am. And, mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, and I, and I sort of long for people to be like, you can be who you are in this class. You don't have to be anything else. You don't have to um, look a certain way. You don't have to be able to do it a certain way. Um, it's just that sensation of being alive and you, you, you could call it prana, you can call it chi, you can, you know, it's all, it's sensing that, that energy yeah. Um, and, yeah. and letting it, and letting it, letting it be um, shared, letting it be out there in the world. Cause we need more of it. That is, I mean, truly, I, and, and one of my friends and trainers in the Nia world she fervently believes, and I do too, that like this kind of practice, when people practice this on a daily basis or even weekly or however many times you can practice it, it will save the world. It will change the world because we're changing ourselves one person at a time and then transmitting that and sharing it out in the world with everyone else. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Which really fits in with, I'm, I'm reading, um, a book right now, um, by Rebecca Campbell. It's, um, light is the new black, uh, which is, a uh, it's a great book so far. I'm enjoying it. But one of the things that she talks about is that uh, we are light workers. Um, you know, those of us, anybody that's drawn to connect with us, 
is a light worker. <laughs> like they just are because that's what we bring is this light worker energy. But light worker isn't, you know, so many people think, oh, you have to be like doing something in the world that's related to energy or healing or different. No, like you just need to do what lights you up. Like mm -hmm. when you do what lights you up, you are being beaming light. You are bringing mm -hmm. that joy. Um, and so I, I feel like, like you say, the more of us that bring that joy, the more we give access to that joy to other people, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, the more that we are able to raise the energy and the vibration of, you know, the whole planet, right? Because it's a snowball effect. Like the more mm -hmm. people that, bring joy, the more joy that comes and the more that we have access to, right? Because mm -hmm. we're all mm -hmm. co-creating. So I love that. Yeah. Um, I so, so, so true. And I love the idea, um, you know, this, this essence of Nia of being able to move your body however you want, right? Like, so there's mm -hmm. not like, you're not stuck doing a certain thing, a certain way. And not that there's anything wrong with that. I do yoga and I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And we are going to have some yoga at the retreat as well. Um, but it's, it, it's this essence of the freedom. Like that's the mm -hmm. other piece of it that I really like about this. Like the freedom to be you, to yes. however your body wants to express itself in that moment to mm -hmm. do that, right? And as long as that brings you joy, perfect. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. you're doing it right. You got it right if you're... And, and Mia has this great... Um, combination of form and freedom mm -hmm. so yeah. there'll there'll be some times where you know i'll guide us in steps or or you know ways of moving yeah. and then there'll be times where it's just simply free movement and the two really they complement each other um it's almost it's like the, the form the form the gives yang. way yeah, yeah it's, and it's right the, and the yang right the structure mm -hmm. and the flow right so mm -hmm. we do need both of those yeah. which is also another feng shui um yes. too right yes. the yin and the yang um mm -hmm. that we do need both and that that container that structure does help actually give you more freedom Mm -hmm. I find that actually, even in my work, you know, I'm a very much um, spirit led in, in doing the things that I'm guided to do. But I also find that it's helpful for me to have a planner, for instance, where I'm like looking at what I need yeah. to do each day because that structure mm -hmm. actually gives me more freedom because yes. then I'm able to like not worry about all the little things, details that need to be taken care of. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a beautiful aspect of it too. Um, so tell me what is one daily ritual that you do um, that keeps you grounded, clear, or present? Mm -hmm. Well, interesting that you just mentioned a planner because that is something that I do every day. So, yeah. and it's a wonderful planner that a friend of mine recommended to me. It's called a Panda planner and it's got, <laughs> okay. Is your idea <laughs> oh, so funny? Okay, so, so obviously, obviously we're like-minded people here. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I love this is this is relatively new to me. I was I've always been sort of a, a list maker and a check off everything off the list, and you know, and that's that's good. I really just love the fact that it's a book, and I take that ritual time in the morning to be like, okay. What am I grateful for? What am I excited about? What are my tasks today? What's my schedule? Um, and and we'll show as you're sharing that, I'm going to show people just like a blank page because yeah. um, it's really cool because you do get to see, you get to do your gratitude and everything all together, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the gratitude yeah. at the beginning of it, the um, you know what am what am I um, what am I grateful for? What am I excited about? I love mm -hmm. that aspect of things because it gets you thinking and, and excited about things. What is your affirmation for the day? Yeah, I, I love those make, parts too. Yeah, I just make those up. Mine today, what was mine today? Um, um, oh, here, here's mine for today. My work is to do what lights me up. Oh, ah, perfect. <laughs> yeah. So that piece of it, I love. Um, and then also at the end of the day, you have an end of the day review. Mm -hmm. So basically this book kind of follows me around um, the house. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have it on my desk during the day, looking at what I need to do. And then at the end of the day, I bring it into, um, it's the last thing I do before I go to sleep. To mm -hmm. wins, and then how I'll improve. And the how I'll improve isn't, I don't feel like it's not a like, oh, what, what did I do wrong? It's more about like, 
oh, you know, how can I make tomorrow, you know, even more fun and more joyful, right? Mm -hmm. What is it that I can do? You know, maybe it's like, oh, I'll, I'll go to the ocean or I'll, I'll go for a walk or maybe it is I'll focus on one task at a time because that mm -hmm. tends to be my thing as I end up, you know, doing a number of things at once. And we know now that, that uh, multitasking doesn't really work that well. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, so those panda planners, it's so funny because this is my first one also. So Mine too. Okay. In, isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I've been doing it. I'm actually almost ready to order the second one. Cause I can't remember how many, I, I think it goes it's like, only like six months, I think. Or is it maybe six months? even less. I don't know. I'm trying to remember three months, six months, something like that. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, mine thing, I think I can. I oh, so I don't, mine is undated. So oh, no, I, I, I put the dates in at oh, the you beginning. Put every, oh, you're, yeah, you're yeah. way ahead of me. I don't, because some days <laughs> I don't do it. So there are days. Oh, okay. If it's a Sunday and I'm not working, um, um, sometimes I'll just write my gratitude and things in the day before. So oh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's an interesting oh. thing that way. I love that. Yeah, I have found that to be a really wonderful grounding way to start the day. And then I usually meditate for... 10 to 15 minutes and I, I don't know, are you familiar with the Insight app? Insight I just, app? I just loaded so, two um, meditations on there actually. Yeah. Um, so, so did I, you put on yourself? I on mine. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, I'll look for yeah. you next time I'm on there. Yeah. Um, I so love Insight that. Timer, yeah. So for people that don't know, Insight Timer is, has all kinds of um, free meditations. And there's like all kinds of different, uh, I haven't fully explored it, but um, I did load two of mine on there, offered them for free for people. So awesome. um, one is a grounding meditation that I put on there and the other one is an abundance meditation. Well, I will look for them and listen yeah. to them. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then usually I will put on some music, maybe two songs, so maybe about 10 to 12 minutes. And I'll do the five stages of self-healing of Nia, which is a practice that's on the floor. And it takes okay. you through um, basically the developmental stage of, of becoming, of being alive. So it's sort of like being embryonic and then creeping and then crawling and standing and walking. So it really, cool. it really be... works all my joints and um, my muscles and releases a lot of... Um, whatever, you know, sort of aches and pains I might have from feeling stiff in the morning, that sort of thing. And then I'll just, I'll just free dance to whatever song comes on that just dance. However, my body feels like dancing. And, nice. uh, that would be really awesome cool. if, um, you could, maybe we can figure out a time for you to share just that five, you know, so yes. people could do on a daily basis. I really like that idea. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and in fact, Nia calls it, we call it the seven minute workout. Okay. And so it's doing the, it's doing the five stages and then one minute of getting up and down off the floor repeatedly okay. for a minute. Okay. And then one minute of laughing. So oh. one minute of laughing on your belly, on the floor and on your back and sitting up and then standing up. Oh my gosh, so, I love that. So it's, I it's, you, that. So you feel like a million bucks after you do all that. You really, right? just, your body feels ready to go and you feel just light and happy. And, and seven minutes, everybody has seven minutes. Yeah. Like oh, truly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people do. Okay. So I've got just a couple other little things that I want to ask you. Um, as okay. we wrap up. Um, okay. So what is one thing on your bucket list or as we're going to call it the 50 fun things list? Yes. Yeah, the 50 yeah. fun things list. Yeah. Oh, I love Teresa and that 50 fun things. Um, yes. So, well, one of them was dancing in a tropical location and sharing Nia in such a place. So, so I'm getting to check a gigantic um, 50 fun things off my list by coming and being a part of this yes. retreat. I'm so excited, so excited. Beautiful. Um, another one though is really, is another nature kind of thing is um, to travel to Mexico at some point and see the, the monarch sanctuaries, the place oh. where all the monarchs travel and they like roost and hang out in these oh, pine trees and wow. uh, a friend of mine went there this February and she showed me some video that she took and it was just, Ooh, just yeah, mind blowing how the, how the, how the butterflies even do what they do, you know, and then just to have the thousands upon thousands of them just in these trees hanging out and, um, wow. 
So I'd love to see that. Um, that sounds cool. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what is your one golden nugget piece of advice? Move every day and, oh. move, and move and move, you know, like I think people think of exercise as kind of like drudgery, you know, or it feels like it's not fun or yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to do. And, and truly even just the thing of putting on some music for 20 minutes and dancing with abandon and fun and, and, and in your living room. Um, and, and really for me then as you're walking and going about your daily life, like how can you walk in a way that feels maybe like that idea we talked about the lifting up from the back and the top of your head so that suddenly like we tend to start to slump and we, then we look down at our phones and we get this sort of tech neck thing going like, so how can, how can we bring a, a sense of, um, really, you know, enlightened movement or like lightening yourself up by moving in a way that feels pleasurable. I mean, Nia is, is just all about pleasure. Yeah. Um, we're not looking to feel pain or feel the burn or, you know, that's not the driving goal. It's really to feel that I just feel so good or I feel better. You know, you step yeah. into class and you're maybe you're like, oh, my day was so awful, you know, or something. And then you're like, oh, I feel better. I feel so much better. Yes. And I love the idea of, you know, that's a uh, move every day is a beautiful energy around that. Like, because I do, our bodies are meant to move. And mm -hmm. so many of us don't do that. So even if it is just taking a walk or whatever you're doing mm -hmm. in yep. some way is really important. So you have a free gift for people that they can access. Tell us about Yes. That. Well, it depends on when you're airing this though, because it starts on Friday, March 29th. Okay. So if, you know, I'm not sure if people can join the 14 days. It's, it's through Nia, okay. Nia, Nia Corporate. Yeah. Um, there's something called Nia TV. And they are offering a free 14-day wellness program that anyone can sign up for. And then you connect through via, you know, it's online. Yeah. And there's videos, there's podcasts, there's meditations. Cool. And it's all um, for you to do in, the, in your home whenever you feel like. But it's okay. about working with any challenges that you might have in your body, either long-term or short-term ones. So okay. um, cool. self-healing. Awesome. Our, our bodies know how to heal if we if we let them. Right, so. right, exactly. Okay, well, we'll put a link to that in uh, the notes um, for okay. sure. And then how can people find you if they want um, to connect yeah. with you or find you or if they're in Minnesota in the Twin Cities area and want to come to one of your classes? How yes. do they find you? Well, I have a website through, uh, through Nia. So it's uh, www.nianow.com. And then my last, my first and last name, backslash Beth Giles. Um, and then, uh, I'm on Facebook. I do post there regularly and I have my schedule classes always listed there. So that's Nia classes with Beth Giles. Um, I am able to be contacted by email or phone or text. I mean, I'm really open to, to all the, all the ways that people can get in touch with me, but those are awesome. the social media ones that are Awesome. And yeah. I have to apologize because I mispronounced your name. <laughs> when we started, okay. I, didn't, I didn't ask. Everybody you. does. So, so many I know because it's, it's G-I-L-E-S. And yeah. so I think people just think it's a, a, it's a hard, a hard G. Thing. I know. Yeah. I did. yeah. So I do apologize for that. Well, this has been amazing. I've really enjoyed um, just swirling with you and talking with you. And I love your energy. We're obviously mm -hmm. on the same page, literally. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so... Panda yeah. planners coming with us wherever we go. <laughs> yeah, and even our our um, email signatures too. Like mine has yes. enjoy. We discovered that. Yep. Yep. So they're really uh, people just get we get connected for a reason, you know. So mm -hmm. and I think that's what's happening with this retreat is the people that are of the same like vibration, energy, and it is about joy. It is about authenticity. These are all the people that are going to be there. Um, not yes. only the people that are the practitioners as in us, but the other people that are being called to attend are also in that space, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, and are moving towards that, 
space of authenticity and joy. So yeah. I'm super excited for those that want to join us to the retreat. Um, it is in November 2019, and we are going to be here on Maui in the beautiful um, uh, Wailea Inn Villa, right in Kia, Kihei, south side of Maui, which is sunny and warm. Uh, beach access, all kinds of stuff. I will put links um, for all the details below. And if you are just not sure if the retreat is right for you and want to have a conversation, please reach out to me because I would be happy to talk to you about it and to share, answer any questions that you have about it as well. Um, so much love and aloha <laughs> to all of you. Have an amazing, amazing day. Yes, thank you, Kim. You're welcome.